Have you ever wondered how to track an attacker through your network? What's going on guys? Welcome to NetSec Explain. And in this video, we're going to be talking about advanced Wireshark network forensics. Okay, so obviously we know that Wireshark is a great tool, great for troubleshooting, great for analysis, and there's plenty of material out there on some of its more basic uses. Instead, I want to show you some advanced techniques on how we can use Wireshark to perform network forensics and solve real-world problems. This workshop series is a video presentation of my in-person workshop that I've given in the past. It's also a bit of an extension of a talk that I've presented in previous years at the DEF CON Wall of Sheep on network-based file carving and open source forensics. To make it easier for you, I've broken this video down into three parts. In this first video, we're going to go over some of the definitions and processes that we're going to need to be familiar with before we can even begin our investigations. In the second video, we're going to cover our first real-world scenario. In there, we're going to look at the traffic on an infected machine and try to understand a few things about the virus on the system. We're then going to cover how to reassemble the network bytes to pull out the virus and analyze it. Finally, in the third video, we're going to build on what we learned and cover our second real-world scenario. In there, we're going to look at a series of attacks on both a network level and application level and learn how to weed out the signal from the noise. But first, who am I? My name is Klondike. I'm a senior consultant and independent security researcher specializing in penetration testing and network forensics. NetSec Explained is a passion project of mine, which is dedicated to the research, learning, and sharing of advanced computer and network security topics in an easy-to-understand way. If you've ever picked up a book on Wireshark or network monitoring, they almost all cover about the same information. They'll show you, here's an ARP frame, here's an IP packet, here's a web request. But what they don't go into is, when you open a PCAP file for the first time, where do you start? What are the things that you're looking for, and how do you find them? which is fine when you're first learning how to use protocol analyzers like Wireshark or TCP dump. But if you have a security manager and they come to you with a full packet capture of an event, you're going to want to know what to look for and where to look to properly analyze that file within a reasonable amount of time. So my goal here is to help you bridge that gap between having a basic understanding of network protocol analyzers and using them to solve real world problems. Now this talk is going to be mostly geared towards the following people. I'll also have some resources at the end if you want to better understand how to implement what you'll learn in this workshop into your current incident response program. Being an advanced workshop, there's a few things I'm going to assume that you already know. You're going to need to know Wireshark. Uh, you're also going to need to know both the OSI and TCP IP models and major common protocols such as HTTP, ARP, TCP, UDP, and the like at the network level. To follow along, you're absolutely going to need Wireshark and a hex editor. I prefer HXD for Windows and Bless for Linux. In this workshop, we'll be going over network-based file carving. Once you understand how to do it manually, I highly recommend checking out Network Miner and Scalpel, as both of these tools will help speed up the process and make it a little easier on you when you're dealing with larger PCAP files. We'll also be adding a few columns to Wireshark to make it easier for us to point out things that we need to know quickly. I won't be covering this in here, but something that I always like to add to my Wireshark is the GeoIP database, which you can pick up for free at the MaxMind website. Okay, so network forensics. What are we trying to do? Well, the word forensics, by definition, has a specific meaning, to collect and prepare evidence for the purpose of litigation. But for the purpose of this workshop, I'm going to be using the word forensics in a more general way. So what I mean here by saying network forensics is the capture, recording, and analysis of network events in order to discover the source of security attacks or other problem incidents. While this workshop is only going to cover PCAP data or data collected by packet capture, this is only just a fraction of network forensics as a whole. The other areas included are log analysis and NetFlow data, or if you can, access to the systems themselves. Now, the network forensic process. Where do we start and what does it look like? Typically when you're presented with a capture file for analysis, that means something happened. So before you get started, you're gonna need to know what that something was. What is your triggering event? Once you have that, you're gonna design a series of focus goals. These goals will help you focus your investigation into achievable results. 
Finally, after you have identified the triggering event and you have a goal, you can begin with the packet capture analysis itself. We'll get into more detail about all of these pieces in a moment, but at the end of this entire process, you will have identified the things that you were looking for, which will allow you to draw your conclusions and take appropriate actions. When trying to understand your triggering events, here are some examples of things that might prompt an investigation. IDS, or log alerts, network communication to other known malicious networks, servers, addresses, countries, or even odd things happening around unexpected time frames, like a coworker logging in at 2 o'clock in the morning. From there, you'll want to create a list of specific goals. The reason for this is, when looking at network packet captures, it's like looking for a needle in a haystack, or more accurately, several needles in several haystacks. And when you find one, you at least want to know that what you're looking at is something important to you and not just another random strand of hay. The kinds of things that you want to look for are known as IOCs, or Indicators of Compromise. What happened before the event, what caused the event, and what has happened or is happening after the event occurred. You'll also want to look for traffic patterns or identifiable signatures, things that you could put into your IDS solution to quickly identify or prevent similar events from happening in the future. And don't forget to prioritize your goals. Once you have all of that, you're ready to dive in and start looking at the capture file. So we have a PCAP file. Now what? Here we have a general outline of the PCAP analysis methodology. This is an iterative process, which means that you may be going back through previous steps often as you find new data, but the basic structure looks like this. You begin with pattern matching. This is where you need to identify and filter packets of interest by matching specific values or protocol metadata. From there, you can start to list the conversations. Here is where you would list all the conversation streams within your filtered, captured data. Then, as you go through the conversations, you can start to isolate and export specific conversation streams of interest. Once isolated, you can extract files or data streams to compile your data and draw conclusions. And that's it. You are now ready to go forth and analyze your capture files. In the next video, we're going to see how all of this comes together in our first real-world scenario.